everyone, okay. I'm now going to read you chapters one and two of Good Dog McTavish. Once you've listened to these two chapters, you can then have a go at answering the comprehension questions, which I've put for you in your homeschool packs. However, if you're not in my class and would like to have a go, I have posted the link to my Tez shop where these questions are available for free to download. And that's just below in the comments. Chapter 1. McTavish Falls for the Peaches McTavish's decision to adopt the Peachy family was not the most sensible decision of his life. He could tell at once that they were not the one, one of those easy families, the ones that fit effortlessly into a dog's life. He could tell they were a family with problems. Whether they'd been traumatised early on or were just difficult by nature, McTavish had no way of knowing. But he did know that adopting them would require patience, discipline and hard work. His logical mind told him to wait for the trouble-free family, a family with easy natures and cheerful smiles. But there was something about the Peaches with their sad little faces that clinched it for him. Oh, McTavish, he warned himself. Are you sure you're not making a mistake? Beware, this could mean years of heartache and frustration. But it was already too late. McTavish had fallen for the Peaches. Chapter 2. Ma Peachy Gives Up McTavish might never have met the Peaches if Ma Peachy hadn't decided to give up being a mother. I give up, she said. No more cooking and cleaning and finding lost keys. No more keeping track of your appointments and nagging you to tidy your rooms. No more boring, thankless jobs. I quit. At first, the younger Peaches rejoiced. No more healthy food, shouted Ollie, aged 12, punching the air in triumph. No more matriarchal oppression crowed Ava, aged 14, looking up from the book she was reading, The Family, A History of Despair. No more nagging to get home in time for dinner, thought Pa Peachy, though of course he would never have said such a thing out loud. The youngest member of the family frowned. Mum, said Betty, are you saying that you've resigned? Ma Peachy smiled. Why yes, Betty, that's an excellent way of putting it. Betty looked concerned. Is that legal? Ma Peachy shrugged. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But I'm sick and tired of everyone making a mess and expecting me to clear it up. I'm done with cooking meals that get cold because no one's home to eat them. And, she said, I'm tired of having to shout at everyone to wake up, go to bed, put the washing away, say please, say thank you, clear the dishes and stop fighting. But, Betty began. Ma Peachy ignored her. So yes, she said. You could say I've resigned, for now anyway. I'm taking time out to pursue peace and quiet from now on. The only person I'm in charge of is me. And with that, she gave Betty a kiss on the head and went off to change into her yoga pants. At first, none of the Peaches really missed being told to clear the table or put the washing away. But as days turned to weeks and nobody made dinner or washed the clothes ever, the sense of freedom wore thin. The Peaches ate ready meals and takeaways every night wore the same clothes over and over and arrived late to school and work each day. There was a great deal more squabbling and a great deal more squalor. Betty, who was by far the most sensible member of the Peachy family, after Ma Peachy, began to feel that some sort of intervention was required. And so, one Saturday afternoon just before Easter, a family conference was held. Due to the loss of motherly care in our family, I'm feeling lost, lonesome and lacking in love said Betty. Ava and Ollie sniggered, but Betty ignored them. I have a proposal, she said. The rest of the Peaches leaned forward expectantly. Across the room, Ma Peachy hummed as she worked on her lotus position. We could ask Ma Peachy to come back, said Betty. Ava gasped. Ollie snorted, and Pa Peachy made a tut-tut noise that did not commit him to any opinion, but still managed to express disapproval. Silence fell. Well, said Betty at last, if we're not planning to ask Ma Peachy to come back, I have another suggestion. Once again, the Peachies all leaned forward to listen. I believe we should get a dog. Ollie imagined a big, handsome, furry creature that might help him to be more attractive to girls. Ava imagined a large, melancholy dog that would help her look more intellectual. Pa Peachy did not want a dog at all, and he said so. A heated discussion ensued that, and in the end, the three peachy children managed to prevail. 
they would take a trip to the dog home. Not by any means to adopt a dog, Pa Peachy warned, just to browse. To browse, Ollie goggled. We are going to browse lonely stray dogs doomed to spend eternity locked up, sad and loveless, in cages. He turned to Ava and lowered his voice to a stage whisper. I always said there was something heartless about Pa Peachy. Ava scowled. Nobody browses homeless dogs, except perhaps, she turned to glare at her father, a sociopath. Never mind, said Betty. We shall go to the dog home to browse and perhaps, just perhaps, we shall find the dog of our dreams. Ollie rolled his eyes. Ava carefully recorded this conversation in a brown notebook. She had hoped that her book, Memoir of a Broken Childhood, would sell for a large sum of money and become an international bestseller. Ollie went back to the book, to the back of the book he was reading, feeling, perhaps correctly, that the last thing the world needed was another book, particularly one written by his older sister.